My name is Neil Batwari, and this segment is about decibel notation. And I'm going to talk about how communication system design uses decibel notation and why we're going to want to be comfortable with that notation. And when we design a link for a communication system, we're going to use dB for the simple grade school reason that addition is easier than multiplication. That's right, addition is easier than multiplication. That's the only reason why we use dB. We're going to have to account for how the power we transmit is multiplied by many, many, many multiplicative terms before it arrives at our receiver. You could do this all completely in linear terms with multiplication, or you could take lo the log of all of the terms and do it with additions. Engineers like me think addition is easier, and we have a transmit power, and we have a minimum received power, which we'll derive from the kinds of formulas that we're going to be using, it's going to be easier to talk about the difference between those in terms of a budget, a budget where we have a certain number of dB available and any gains and losses will add together to stay within that budget. So how do we convert between linear and dB? Converting linear to dB is taking the log base 10 and multiplying by 10, but don't forget the reference. Let's do a power conversion in watts example. We're going to convert into dBW, that is power in decibels referred to 1 watt, by taking 10 multiplied by the log base 10 of the linear power divided by the reference power of 1 watt. The output of this formula is the power in dBW. The capital W at the end there refers to watts. It means that we're using a reference of one watt. In general, we would convert a number, linear number x, into dB by taking 10 times the log base 10 of that linear value divided by a reference, and then we'd name the units dB reference for that unit. So we could use milliwatts, and we'd have dBmW, which is usually abbreviated dBm for short. We could use joules and we'd have dB joules. That unit is then the one that we're putting as the reference in the denominator. The reason we do that is because when we have a unit, a linear value with a unit, we can't take the log base 10 of a unit, so we would divide by a reference, get a unitless value, and then we can convert it. It's hard to remember to keep a reference, and sometimes you just kind of forget about the unit while you're writing it. But I want you to remember the unit so that it's very explicit what you're doing and you end up with a dB of a unit when you need one. And typically, power and energy are the things that we're going to be converting into decibel units. Sometimes you won't have a unit. You'll convert a unitless gain or loss to dB. For example, let's assume that we have a filter with a gain of H of F. If we had a voltage signal and we put it through this filter, it, its magnitude would be multiplied by this magnitude of H of F, so it is a voltage gain. We're also going to talk about a power gain, H of F squared. If I put some power into the filter, then the output of that will be multiplied by H of F magnitude squared. And so when I talk about the power gain in dB, and this gain is 10 log 10 of magnitude of H of F squared, people will write it as 20 log base 10 of the magnitude of H of F, which then takes the exponent of the 2 and puts it down in front. People get confused by this 20 log 10, and they ask, when do I need the 10 log 10? When do I need the 20 log 10? And what I would tell you is that you only need the 20 log 10 if you're converting from a voltage gain into a power gain in dB. If you have a power gain inside the argument of logarithm and you want to know the power gain in dB, then use a 10 log 10. 20 log 10 is only for converting from voltage gain to power gain. Okay, and to convert back to linear values, I'm going to take the reference and I'm going to multiply that by 10 to the power of the dB value divided by 10. And just remember that the reference over here is multiplying this unitless value, then the reference provides the units. 
In general, I would have the linear value for any kind of reference where I multiply the reference by 10 to the db value divided by 10. And db here, ref, just tells me to put in the letter for that unit inside and next to the db. So what is the value of this? I've given you the formula. I really want to tell you how to use this to convert multiplication into addition and to make our lives easier when we're designing communication systems. First, I'm going to point out three db values that are important. And these are the conversions between a linear factor and a db factor. And the first will be the factor of 10 in db. That will convert to 10. So multiplying by 10 is the same as adding 10 in db. The next one is going to be multiplying by 2. And in db, that's going to be adding 3 db. And finally, sometimes this is useful, multiplying by 1.25 or 5 fourths or increasing by 25%. That one is about 1 db. Okay, now these are not exact, but these are very good engineering approximations. So for example, I'm going to ask you to convert 30 dbw into linear. And to do that, I'm not going to use the math, the conversion formula. I'm just going to use these multiplica multiplicative factors uh, and db factors to convert back and forth. So I can see that 30 dbw is 3 times 10. I'm adding 10 3 times. So in the linear domain, I'm multiplying by 10 3 times. My reference, I take that 1 watt and I multiply by 10, by 10, and by 10, and I get 1,000 watts. Let's take 33 dB and let's do dBm so I have a different unit. 33 dBm, it's like 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 3 dB. And the unit of milliwatts is what we mean by this little m. So I take that one milliwatt and I multiply by 10 by 10 by 10 and then I multiply by 2 because this 3 dBm additive is a multiply by 2. So that gets me 2,000 milliwatts. And a milliwatt is 10 to the minus 3 watts, so I can convert this to 2 watts. Uh, let's do a unitless example. And let's take something negative. We have a lot of times where we get a negative dB value. Let's say minus 24 dBm. There are multiple ways you could get there um, to get the minus 24 here, but I'm going to say let's take uh, this and convert it into minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, plus 3, plus 3. And this is dBm. So I get 1 milliwatt. And then I divide by 10. Okay, so I put 10 to the 3 on the bottom here, I get divide by 10 3 times. And then I'm adding 3 twice, so I'm going to multiply by 2. Okay, and so I get 4 times 10 to the minus 3 milliwatt, um, or I could convert that into 4 microwatt. And then let's convert linear to dB in a couple examples. We're going to take 0 0.2 watts and convert it into dB. And 0 0.2 is the same as 0 0.1 watts multiplied by 2, which then in dB, that 0 0.1 watt, that is 1 watt divided by 10. 1 watt divided by 10 is minus 10 dBw. But then the times 2, that's adding 3 dB. And so I get minus 7 dbw. Whenever you're adding things and you list a db and, and a dbw, you have to be careful because you have to remember that the units are actually multiplicative. So this is unitless, this has the units of one watt. So I should only have one db term that has a reference when I'm adding dbs together. And I do here, I only have one term, this minus 10 dbw that is the unit of 1 watt, and so I get a minus 7 dBw, even though this one is also 
plus 3 dB. Let's do uh, 50 milliwatts and convert that to dBm. So that's going to be 10 milliwatts times 10 divided by 2, okay, which then converts into 10 dBm plus 10 dB for the multiply by 10. Divide by 2 is a minus 3, and so I get 17 dBm. When you can use a calculator, you can always convert the numbers directly by saying that P dB is equal to 10 times log base 10 of 50 milliwatt divided by 1 milliwatt. Um, I get out of my calculator 16.9897, pretty close to 17 for engineering purposes. So you can see that the formula and these terms that I've memorized help me convert from linear to dB or vice versa. And as we get further, we'll be using these dB terms more and more as we describe how to design links.